Okay, we are um, good to go. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us. I'm just gonna, just for the record, um, look at the screen and repeat everybody's name. So if I missed you, please let me know. So I see Carol, I see Kevin Sullivan, I see Councilman Biggs, I see Derek Greger, Town Engineer, Rob O'Connor, George Oikel, Bruce Boxtall, Brian Summers, Tom Carson, Denise Bradley, Judy Keene, and Casey White. Did I miss anyone? Okay, that's a good start then. All right, let me, um, I do have a PowerPoint tonight to follow along with. So let me get that started here. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is the uh, 22nd meeting of the Weathershield Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. Today is Thursday, February 25 of 21. Um, I think we've already gone through the attendance and uh, I will uh, add people as we go if they join the meeting late. This is our agenda tonight. Uh, we're gonna review the minutes from our last meeting, February 11th. Uh, we're going to discuss tonight specifically bicycle facilities um, uh, as part of the recommendations for chapter 10 of the plan. Uh, we're gonna uh, bring you all up to speed on some of the ongoing projects going on in the community. Uh, we'll open it up for any other business. And then we have uh, selected uh, March 18th as our next meeting date. So hopefully um, people aren't in bad shape from St. Patrick's Day. Um, you should have received in your packets the meeting notes from our last meeting, which was held on February 11th. Uh, does anyone have any comments, corrections, errors, anything like that? I thought they were good. Okay, any other comments? No? Okay, we'll move on. Um, once again, just to refresh everyone's memory, um, all of the work done to date, minutes, agendas, meeting presentations are all posted on the town website under our bike ped plan. So there's a lot of information on there. If you need to get caught up, please uh, take a peek at that. So I think we are caught up uh, to our last meeting. So everything we've done so far is on uh, the town's website. Uh, as I said earlier, we're into chapter 10, which are ac actions and recommendations. Specifically tonight, we're gonna talk about bicycle facilities and a bicycle network plan. Uh, we've broken the recommendations uh, down as follows. Local streets, which are under the control of uh, the town. Uh, state roads, which obviously are under the uh, authority of the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, potential multi-use paths uh, in the community. And then lastly, we're going to highlight some recommended routes uh, that were included in the uh, Safe Route to School reports for all of the elementary schools and for the middle school. At our next meeting, uh, we are pretty much going to wrap up our recommendations. We're going to talk about uh, locations for bicycle parking, whether we need uh, uh, improvements to uh, bus transit, uh, bus shelters, and we're gonna talk about off-street trail recommendations as well. And that will pretty much wrap up uh, the recommendations um, and we'll then discuss a schedule for getting this plan completed. Please, once again, if uh, you have questions, just jump right in um, and I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, just to summarize at our last meeting, we talked uh, specifically about pedestrian facilities. Uh, we broke those recommendations into three different categories. We identified 47 sidewalk gaps uh, that we wanted to uh, pay some attention to in the upcoming years. We identified uh, 26 locations where crosswalk improvements were necessary. And then lastly, we identified 34 primarily intersection locations that we're classifying as spot improvements that should be included in the plan. 
Uh, we did edit those lists. So we ended up plus or minus in each one of those categories as we added and subtracted recommendations. But nevertheless, uh, that was how the, um, the meeting went uh, last time around. Uh, once again, a, a refresher. Um, we are trying to prioritize these recommendations, uh, A, B, or C, A being uh, the highest priority and having the biggest impact, and obviously C being the lower priority, having a lower uh, or least impact uh, on benefits to the community. We're using these five criteria to make those um, prioritizations. Uh, we, look, we look at safety, we look at equity, uh, we look at the feasibility of the project. We look at the opportunity. Um, when we say opportunity, uh, if there are uh, existing programs or existing projects that these recommendations can piggyback on, uh, those are obviously in most cases easier to implement. And then lastly, uh, costs are obviously a factor with unlimited, with not limited resources, we uh, obviously have to be mindful of the costs of many of these projects and their feasibility. So hopefully you can see um, this um, chart. So why don't we get, we jump right into it and please, as we go, uh, please comment. Um, I, I, as you can see, I did not prioritize uh, any of these yet. So um, don't be shy if you feel strongly about uh, these recommendations, whether they are, uh, should be a, a, a C priority or whether they should be an a, a priority, please let me know as we go through each one of those, what your thoughts uh, on prioritization should be. So um, these are the um, recommended uh, bicycle routes uh, as uh, located on our local street system. So first one being Highland Street. Obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously uh, Highland Street was recently uh, reconstructed uh, by the town. Uh, it is also part of the Heritage Way and it also connects to Rocky Hill. So it, it garners uh, a number of um, points in our criteria system. Um, so this would be the section of, of Highland Street from uh, the Rocky Hill town line to Gris Griswold. Anyone have any strong feelings about that one? Okay, uh, the next uh, route being the uh, section of road uh, that includes Two Rod Highway and Hang Dog Lane, uh, both of them located uh, almost on the uh, Rocky Hill um, town line, also connecting to Newington. So uh, both of those streets would provide uh, connectivity to uh, our neighboring towns of Newington and Rocky Hill. Uh, this would be a, an east-west connection in the southern part of town. Okay. Peter, that, this is Bruce. I, I think that's probably the one connection route that uh, might be easily implemented. Uh, both the other east-west routes are really traffic problems. So this one probably should have a, you know, be, be considered as a sort of an important east-west east -west link. Okay, thanks. I, I, I was agree. thinking with that, I would uh, kind of half second that. Um, I'm wondering if maybe uh, hang dog, uh, the uh, hang dog is pretty wide. Um, so I don't know if it would be a highest priority. A two rod is considerably narrower. So I, I might suggest thinking about looking at those as two di slightly different priorities. Maybe A for two rod and B for hang dog. But I, I, uh, I agree with Bruce that there's not much going east west. Uh, for good connections. Okay. Uh, so number three, uh, Griswold Road. Uh, a portion of Griswold uh, is um, part of the Heritage Way connecting uh, Highland Street into the sort of back entrance to Millwoods. Woods. 
Okay. Uh, number four, uh, Folly Brook Boulevard. Obviously, there are various sections of Folly Brook as it's broken up as part of the Heritage Way, but obviously, it is part of the Heritage Way. Uh, ultimately, on the northern end of Folly Brook, it would connect uh, into the Hartford uh, bike route system. So, it provides connectivity to Hartford uh, as well. So, um, at Folly Brook, Peter, that is at the north end. I mean, yes. that does connect in there? Or? Yes, so at the very north end of Folly Brook, it connects to Hartford. He, um, I mean, they have something there? They have a, an entire network that they are working on um, that Not would- Not in place though, okay. Yeah, so it would ultimately connect uh, to the, the Hartford network. Okay, good. That also makes a, um, a good connection at the end to, to Goodwin Park, to the back, you know, the back door of Goodwin Park, and you can get off the road and traverse the park both both ways there. So I, that's one of my commuting routes, but um, I also, I think that they made it a little bit better by the apartments, but it's, that's probably the, the challenging part for the bike route because I guess parking on one side, but it's another speed zone, you know, it's kind of a little dicey. <clears throat> it's super wide though on this, the sidewalk. It, it, you could almost put a multi-use path on the, on the one side there we ever wanted to try something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, good possibility. Okay, um, number five, uh, the Middletown Avenue Spring Street Corridor, ultimately on the south end of Middletown Avenue. Uh, it connects to Rocky Hill. Middletown Avenue is uh, generously wide, at least um, for the majority of it as you get closer to Rocky Hill and into Rocky Hill, it narrows up. Uh, but nevertheless, the Weathersfield section has lots of room and provides a, uh, an alternative to the Silas Dean Highway uh, as well. So we'll talk about the Silas Dean Highway a little bit later uh, in this list, but this would be the um, connectivity into Rocky Hill. But you're talking about both Spring Street and Middletown. Yes, as part of a Part of a corridor, yes. Right out to uh, Silas Dean, exactly, right? Well, all the way up to Main Street. Uh, so, uh, or, or, or they call that, is that Wells Road there, depending on what that section is actually called, but um, up through where the apartments is on, on the other side of the pond. Okay. Including Middletown Avenue below Maple, Maple Street. Peter, is Rocky Hill doing anything with their part with their extension of Middletown Avenue because the Weathersfield side is wide, but once you cross the tracks and get to Rocky Hill, it tightens up dramatically. We're actually, um, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. We're, we're attending a meeting um, with uh, the Rocky Hill Plan of Development Implementation Committee next week to start uh, talking uh, with them about some of these recommendations. Uh, their plan of development is, um, lacking in specificity, shall we say. So we're trying to compare notes and see if we can evolve things so that we're all, we're all on the same page. Okay. And Mill Street is a key part of one of the, what you might say to them? Uh, uh, definitely the Middletown Hour Avenue corridor. The so- Middletown Avenue, um, of course. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. Peter, I think that that uh, is a straight shot and uh, it takes us right back down to old Weathersfield. So I think that should be a priority. Yep, okay. Um, Broad Street is on here. Uh, obviously, uh, Broad Street shows up on some of, it's not part of the Heritage um, Way bike path, but it is included on a, as sort of a spur uh, to that. Um, so we include uh, Broad Street. Obviously it gets a lot of uh, pedestrian uh, and bicycle activity. So we should look at it further as to designating it um, appropriately for, for cycling purposes. Broad Street needs, first of all, it needs resurfacing, but it also needs bike lanes mm -hmm. so that um, it's safer to, uh, the cars can go along there very quickly. You're right. right, Jody. It's uh, particularly deteriorating in front of your house, I hope. <laughs> I know, and I have to go on that surface all I the know, time. I know. It also I needs walking. It also needs a walking path. 
It does. And, you know, years ago, Howie Greenblatt suggested making the green one way and having a wide walking and biking lane right around the perimeter of the green. And I think that that's more needed now than ever. Quite make some sense, Judy, to me. I walked that area enough. So. Well, I think you're among thousands. So it's, it's oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well used. Yeah. Well used. And I also, I think the southern end, as I said before, needs a crossing there between both sides. Yes. Of the, of the green. And uh, and it, it, I don't want it way nice. down where the, it gets narrow. No, that's not good enough. I mean, right at the tip of the, the green. And you know, when you go down the green, uh, going up towards Spring Street uh, or Middletown Avenue there, that's very narrow and people are parked there all the time. It's dangerous. Yep. Okay. Um, Main Street, obviously, is part of the uh, Heritage Way, at least uh, the northern um, portion uh, of Main Street. So we've included Main Street um, on the list. It's dangerous for biking. It needs yep. a bike lane. Yep. Uh, number eight, the State Street, uh, Hartford Avenue corridor, which would connect with Main Street and provide that kind of connectivity. And ultimately it would connect uh, on the Northern end of Hartford Avenue uh, to Hartford. And hopefully uh, at some point in the future, uh, potential connection to Riverfront recapture right. and or the Hartford, you know, on street, uh, bike network. But Peter didn't, but Hartford Avenue was just redone and didn't he put in, he put in lanes, right? So it's yes. just. He didn't put in bikes. Bike, beautiful. He didn't put in um, bike lanes uh, technically. He put in um, shoulder stripes. So, right, uh, but it works the same. It, it, it does and it's I think great. effectively it does, it, effectively it does. One, one thought on that is that since the DMV is there, I think there's an equity piece of letting, making it easier for people to access that public uh, building. Definitely, uh, it garners those kind of points. Although if you're going to DMV, you probably have a vehicle, but that's, but I, I understand what you're saying. Considering um, all the people who are waiting in the bus stop there all the time, there's gotta be people coming there without a car. Yep. Yep. Yeah, before they before they have their car, yeah. And you have right. to think about commuters. Their as license. Well. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, Marsh Street, Great Meadow Road. As we've discussed, we have uh, a, a project uh, in the wings, uh, at least a phase project, which would connect um, Main Street uh, down Marsh Street and down Great Meadow Road uh, to the um, Putnam Bridge Trail connection and to the uh, trail system in the uh, Great Meadows, uh, which is uh, also part of the Heritage Way. So we and would have that. Put it off, Peter, or uh, something you said, that planning and zoning? Uh, the Mark Street uh, Great Meadow project is, um, there, we're surveying uh, for, for that project now uh, to start the design process shortly. So the money has been awarded uh, in a phased approach. Um, but the Putnam Bridge Trail is probably what you're asking about. That's been pushed out a year. That's been pushed back a year, but this other is still going on. You're right. I mean, I said about, right. Okay. When when would that be up to? Uh, well, it's way down the road, right? I mean, they got to design it, right? It's and it's designed, and they were getting ready to go out to bid, so they've held off on the bid, so, bid, bidding for a year. So it's and close. It goes, it goes up into. Uh, in, in, into Main Street, uh, then really does it uh, all the way up to the First Church? Uh, no? This this section, yeah, the Marsh Street Great Meadow Road uh, project would connect all the way up to Main Street, ultimately. So it might really help the whole of uh, the curves and everything else potentially, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank and then you. Re related to that is the uh, the short stretch of the Heritage Way, which is on Hart Street. Uh, Hart Street is obviously a one-way street. I think um, at some point in the future, uh, we need to have the conversation as to whether Hart Street should continue to be, you know, the designated section of the Heritage Way, or should we encourage people to pass by the businesses, come into uh, uh, down Main Street to Church Street, 
and then go down Marsh Street um, to Great Meadow Road as the more formal, uh, more formal route of the Heritage Way. But that's a conversation for another day. But for the sake of uh, this planning effort, um, Hart Street should be included in the in the bicycle network as it's part of the Heritage Way today. Okay. Hart Street is safer. Yeah, right one now. way it makes it safer. Yeah. In fact, you might own, if, it, if people weren't on it and had to use it, it might be eliminated and made a part of the heritage way only with no cars, but you can't do that, All right? Uh, yes, you'd be hard pressed to eliminate that. For, oh, yeah. But oh, yeah, I know. anything is possible, I guess. Um, That's a bad intersection, but if it were, if you went onto Hart Street heading uh, into Old Weathersfield, that would be safer than that you're going from Hart Street into the intersection of 91. If you thought about it as a one-way path, going into the meadows one way and coming out of the meadows into Hart Street might make some sense. You're not crossing an awful lot. Right, okay. It's a bad uh, intersection. It is a bad intersection. Um, number 12, uh, no, I guess we lost one here along the way. The numbering system is off by one. Um, number 12, uh, Goff Road, uh, north-south, several sections of Goff Road. Has some width to it uh, and provides uh, an alternative, um, obviously an alternative to north-south and not since you can't go on Berl the Berlin Turnpike. Mm -hmm. uh, number 13. Uh, the, the sort of the main spine of town, uh, Ridge Road, uh, runs all the way up uh, to Hartford and down south for a significant uh, portion uh, of the community. And in most cases, it's pretty wide, although people do park um, on the curb there, but nevertheless, uh, provides a significant north-south corridor. But yeah, if you're talking about the north-south Ridge Road is much better than Goff because yeah. Goff, when you get going after Wells Road, is really pretty narrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number 14, Thornbush Road, a short stretch coming off of Highland. Has the has the uh, farms there, the open space as well, and houses on one side there. So where would it connect to? Uh, Prospect Street? Uh, it would connect Prospect? to Highland and then Prospect, yes. You'd have to shift over a block to get to Goff or um, Thornbush. Yeah. I actually think most people take Collier instead of Thornbush, though, because there's less traffic and you don't have a really big hill. Good point. We'll put a question next to Thornbush then. Um, number 15, Church Street. Um, ultimately can connect with the Heritage Way. Um, you can get off the Heritage Way, come uh, up Church Street and then back down Church Street. It does have uh, slope and it does have some busy traffic patterns as you get close to the Silestine Highway, but nevertheless, it ultimately can connect you with um, Main Street. Make, make another outlet from Town Hall here out on the Silestine. So. Yeah, I think that's a good, it is a busy street, but I think it's not too busy and they're having uh, a bike lane could help calm traffic too. You know, I'm kidding with you, Peter, but nevertheless, it's almost a good idea. Yeah, I, I also think it's a, it's a good, um, I come off the, do a lot of off the heritage way and come up the hill, but it connects the high school, it connects those neighborhoods. It also, you know, when you come up to, when you come up to Wolcott, it gets people in the four-way stop to kind of recognize you as a crosser. I think it's almost like a training kind of place to calm traffic down and then the hill down is that is that Silas Dean intersection, which is it's uh, I 
I have a few problems on there. It also has the, you know, the library. I, I just like it for the connections. It's like the library, the town hall, the, the, the bike repair station, the middle school. Kind of just, and then you just have to run the gauntlet of getting across the Silas D and you're, you know, into a, a, a wide way into El Westfield too, so. Rob, what you're saying, too much goes on there, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, still, I, I still feel like coming out of there, right. it's, it's a good workout. The hill there is a workout you know, coming both ways, but it's like, um, I feel safe there, especially the, from coming up the hill toward the South Dean and, um, and even the, if, even after you cross, it's, it's pretty wide there. It's, it's usually people know they have to stop ahead. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to 16, uh, Knott street. Once again, a, uh, east, west, west, east, um, corridor. It does have, uh, some slope challenges as you get towards Ridge Road, but any of these east-west connections that intersect with Ridge Road will have that, um, have that challenge. Um, Where does Heritage Road, Heritage Way go at North Street? It, it's in the section Where by the, north? well, between the, uh, between Old Weathersfield um, and the, it comes out at um, Charles Wright School. Charles Wright School through the back there. Yep makes kind of a weird circuitous route, but comes out in front of um, the school and then down across the Silas Dean Highway. Yeah. Uh, Peter, in reference to Knott Street and the other east-west roads that encounter the major rise there, um, it would be really helpful to actually have the bike lane there because going up the hill on a bike, you're you need more space because you're not likely to maintain a nice straight line. And so having a bike lane on that really steep section would be um, beneficial for safety reasons. Okay. Okay, number 17, Jordan Lane. Um, we only uh, control a small segment of Jordan Lane uh, for whatever historical reasons that is, but it's the section between the Silas Dean Highway uh, and um, Hartford Avenue. The rest of it is a state uh, road. Mm -hmm. So um, we're recommending that we discuss the Jordan Lane corridor in its entirety. Uh, and therefore this little small section would be included as well. All right, uh, Elm Street. So the thought here would be, although it's challenging at Maple Street, is to connect uh, Broad Street uh, with the Great Meadows, providing an alternative uh, to get into the meadows if you didn't want to go down all the way to Great Meadow Road and down through that way. Um, the um, crossing at Maple Street is um, a little hairy, if you've ever tried it. But the there car. is a light. There is a light that you can push the button on. It's just, it just happens to be in the snowbanks. But yes, yes, yeah. And there's no sidewalk connecting to it, and you have to haul your bike uh, 15 feet into the median there in the grass or whatever to get over there. It's really kind of strange. I well, obviously, the bri a bridge be put in there. For sure. <laughs> it might not be within the budget, George, but but maybe some improvements by moving, you know, the button by making other improvements there. Um, so I, we're throwing that out there for, for conversation. Even I say yes. Some, even some signage, with, <clears throat> some, some good signage. And, um, I, I, I think it's a great, like I take it all the time and I plotted it on our mapping thing. There's, it's a four mile loop. If you, if you take Elm street and go into the meadows and come out the other way and come back to where you started, it's like four miles. It's a really nice, other than that crossing. Cause once you get across there, it's really nice. It's like the stables there, there's you through the farms and it's kind of like a neat little reverse loop, but yep. just just something in that either signage or even, even paint and stripes and just kind of like letting people know, but um, you always get looked at kind of sideways when guys, when people stop at the lights there, but I think, also, that, unless I, it's I think there are sensors under that light too, like for, you know, for change, cars to trigger. The crossing them. light is pretty short. It's very short. And that yeah. would do that would do double duty for the pedestrian use as well, because I know in jogging through there, you hit that crosswalk light and you just 
pray that there aren't idiots coming off the highway yeah. <laughs> at too high a speed. That's probably my fastest run is that section. We've been pulling a child's bike carriage with kids. In the same thing about the uh, Middletown Avenue, uh, Spring Street uh, light there. That's very short. You can barely make it across on a bike. I can't imagine walking. Well, I think with all of these recommendations there, just to include them on the route and the details, you know, the, the, the improvements, the timing, uh, other uh, aspects of, you know, making it a full project would all have to be looked at in, in much more detail. It's just a matter of giving us a blueprint uh, and then, uh, you know, figuring out the, the specific details going forward. So if you think it's worthy of being on a, a route map, that's really the, what, what, what the takeaway is here. Absolutely, absolutely, that one is. Okay, um, let's move on to 19, Copper Mill Road. Once again, a long north-south uh, corridor in the southern part of town. Um, we, he we heard uh, in the surveys from many residents down there about Copper Mill and Fox Hill needing sidewalks, being very um, busy with uh, walkers runners and cyclists. So uh, piggybacking on those uh, neighborhood feelings, uh, we felt uh, it might be warranted to be, to be able to do that in on both of these uh, corridors, and Fox Hill Cop and Copper Mill. And Copper Mill is pretty wide, Peter. You could probably do the shoulder lanes yes. like you did on Hartford and that would address a lot of those concerns. It was also a corridor that they felt uh, uh, at least it was perceived to be a high speed corridor because of it, because of it being so wide. It is, but with a couple stop signs, it doesn't seem to slow them down there. I don't use it that much, but it's, it is fast. Okay. Um, and then an east west, um, the east west corridor, Fox Hill, and it would turn into Old Common. So they would crisscross each other here. That would be a nice route in uh, Pyquag. I think yes. those are all worthy. Okay. Um, this was a recommendation. So some of these recommendations, because we have another another section that deals with uh, the school recommendations are gonna double up, but uh, this was Highcrest Road. It was recommended in the uh, Safe Route to School report that at least uh, shoulder lines uh, be added uh, for uh, school kids. Uh, using their bikes to get to high crest. So 20, 19, 20, and 21, I think should all be considered there. That would be a nice bike route. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, here's the Mill Street recommendation, which uh, sort of piggybacks on the Middletown Avenue Spring Street. I don't think Jim um, is here tonight, but I'm sure he would be the first to, uh, to vote. And now with the construction of the Borden project, um, we think these kinds of improvements are um, really gonna help uh, provide some uh, amenities for uh, those residents to connect to a broader uh, bicycle network. Agreed. Okay. Uh, once again, from uh, the Safe Routes to School report, uh, they're recommending that Garden Street uh, have at least some level of uh, bike route designation, whether it's simply just a shoulder stripe. Garden Street, however, in, in several yeah. locations is very narrow, but it's near a school. People use it all the time uh, mm -hmm. as it is now. So it's become sort of a natural bike route without any specific designation, but it was recommended. It is a, a walking and biking route for the elementary, the Hamner Elementary School. Yeah, that's a really, really popular road that kids are on it all the time. And bikes. Um, yeah. Actually, okay. it is a great way to get from Jordan Lane to the Green too. So there's mm -hmm. the connection. Yeah. It's a great share our road. Yes, I think that ultimately would be what we would have to have to do because of the width of the of the pavement there. Right. All right, uh, Charter Road, which connects um, sort of on the backside of the 
Walmart, Stop and Shop Plaza uh, into Rocky Hill. Um, it's a pretty wide street, but once again, it provides connectivity uh, to Rocky Hill as well and would connect you uh, with Maple um, at that intersection there. Yep, I use it. And it is one of the routes designated in the Rocky Hill Plan of Conservation and Development. So it's at least documented by them as being part of a potential network that they would have. Okay, uh, Willow Street. Once again, this was another recommendation in the Safe Route to School uh, plan. Uh, it is a walking and biking route uh, for the neighborhood there for kids to get to Willow. There are some sidewalk uh, gaps that we talked about at the last meeting, but they are recommending at least um, from that neighborhood uh, some level of designated uh, bi bicycle protection um, along Willow Street. Peter, what's the reality of uh, sidewalks being put in in those gaps on Willow? For example, this is, I just bring this one up as an example. How are these going to be done? So part or of the problem be doing it. I mean, there's a lot of open space there and, uh, you know, I don't know where that money would come from. Yeah. So the problem is um, much of the gap uh, exists along the, uh, the open space, the farm property. Therefore, the town uh, would be responsible for maintaining the sidewalk, remo removing snow uh, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And that just adds another red flag wrinkle whenever we propose adding sidewalk, the issue of maintenance uh, is raised. And uh, although we do have uh, many parks where we do maintain, it would just add to the responsibilities. Certainly not the end of the world, but just adds a level that some of these and other you're things- You're talking about have. one side of Willow only? That's what we talked about at the last meeting. So we're not no, getting- I think so. Not the getting west side is the part that you should do. Right. But it also is the school side. Okay. Probably a crosswalk would help when it disappears on the east side. Yeah, in all of these cases, we would, you know, really spend some time analyzing the best way of approaching these without getting into the details uh, in the plan itself. Um, the next one is Collier Road. We talked about this a little bit earlier. I think yep. somebody had suggested that. So here it is as a recommendation. Yep. Okay. Uh, I've got Old Reservoir Road with a question mark. The reason it's a question mark, there is a gap uh, in between the southern section of Old Reservoir and the northern section of Old Reservoir. Old Reservoir is incredibly wide. You could probably land a 747 um, on the southern part anyway, maybe even the northern part, but the problem exists in the middle. Uh, Peter, don't mind me laughing back here, but you know how I feel. And I know how you feel on that one. P Peter says that there are there are wet wetland soils on that section, and it can't be can't be uh, brought through. And I'm a strong believer that the uh, Rail Reservoir Road ought to be connected up. But it could be a um, an elevated, you know, uh, or at grade. There there are other ways of of skinning the cat if you wanted to make that. Oh, okay. You know, an on-road section and then an off-road section. So um, that's the reason. An elevated the walkway would be really nice. Let's just Ex add to the cost. Ex expensive, <laughs> but, or you make it, you know, you route it in such a way as it really, um, you know, works with the, uh, works with the environment. It may not be a straight uh, and easy, right. but never, nevertheless, it could be a combination of on-road and off-road. So I added it in here because I think it's worthy of further investigation, plus it's a, nor a significant north-south uh, corridor in that corner of town. Um, so, and there's open space, you've got the reservoir. Considering the commission in the old days, they've been on it so too long that I don't remember some of this stuff, but uh, back lane, the, you know, to the, to the west, we cut it off at one point. Uh, because uh, Old Reservoir Road was going to be available. Because others would say you've got Thornbush and uh, Highland, but uh, hey, can argue about that, right? Here? But no, I, I think that ought to go through someday. I'm glad to hear there are, you have ways of maybe handling how 
or, or, or you work it through Wilkes Farm. Uh, so it's a combination of, of uh, on-road and off-road. So there may be a, a hybrid uh, bike route system down through there. Okay. Anyone feel strongly that we should not keep it in here? Nope, keep it in. Okay. All right, we'll move on to state, state roads. And then surprisingly, I, I when, when we started this process, I thought the state uh, road list uh, and associated bike routes would be much more significant than the six that we have uh, identified here. So um, as you can see, most of the routes would be on local roads. So these are the six state roads for uh, discussion. We talked about Jordan Lane a little bit earlier, at least the small section of it. Um, so we're recommending um, that Jordan Lane be considered for a, uh, an east-west corridor on the northern uh, boundary uh, of Wethersfield. There is a hill there, once again, at the uh, connection with Ridge Road, but uh, Jordan Lane is, uh, in most, for most of it, pretty wide. It was recently repaved, so the, the pavement condition is very good. They did add already uh, a shoulder line, um, so it's got many assets that I think um, should include it in, in our network. Okay, hearing nothing. Um, Not Street uh, it has a small segment that is actually uh, controlled by the state. Uh, that's the section between the Silestein Highway and um, I guess it's State Street where Hartford Avenue intersects. Um, it is already included on the Heritage Way. Uh, they are working on that stretch of road right now. Um, we are, uh, or Derek, I should say, the town engineer is in conversation with them about seeing what we can do maybe to uh, widen it a little bit. Uh, it's very narrow. Um, they had shoulder stripes on there, but literally, uh, the shoulder lines maybe only gave you a, a foot or two at the most. So, um, and obviously it's already on the heritage way. So it's kind of a uh, no brainer uh, if we, but, but the right of way is limited. So yeah, you okay. probably would not be able to do a uh, bike lane. It might end up being a Shero situation. Okay. I think that might also be a place sometimes at the um, at the traffic light to to have Weathersfield's first bike box. You know, like to to paint a green box for cyclists that are going up that hill to give them a it's just paint to give them a head start. You know, so you get a you get to stand. It, it basically lets you go in front of the cars, even if you're coming up a little bit late, and then take off and get some speed up the hill. What? I've never heard of that. Could you explain that a little better? Yeah, so, so the, I mean, every, like, in, in you know, actually there's one, I think there's one in Hartford on Broad Street, but where, where you have a bike lane, which we sort of would have be in the Heritage Way, like at least on the side, you would have at a red light be able to come up all the way and then a big green, maybe, I don't know if it's 10 or 12 feet paint job right at the crosswalk where you can get, it lets you get in front and it's, you know, designated bike box, you can get in front of the car so they know that, you know, you're going straight and it gives you a little bit of a head start. Oh, cool. I didn't know about those. Only a matter of the motor is realizing that. Mm. Yeah. That doesn't sound real safe to me, but. Yeah, right turn on red. It actually, it actually makes it a lot, a lot, I mean, it's a lot safer if you're, because I, I mean, if you're, if you are a cyclist who's taking the lane and you're, you know, number three car, three behind a, you know, three cars. This lets you basically pass, go, and get in front of them at, only at a at a light. It's a it's a, it's meant to, for a stop situation. Okay. Uh, moving on, number three, Wells Road, obviously connects to Newington, uh, connects back into uh, Old Weathersfield. Um, uh, however, has some challenging topography. Um, even close to the Celestine Highway, uh, up and down, but uh, also passes in proximity to the high school. So it's got some, um, it's got some assets uh, to include as well. 
It does, but Peter, it's really not a connectivity to Newington because you have to go over Cedar Mountain, which has a ton of traffic and is a really dangerous hill. And you really don't want people walking and biking on that. So it's only useful up to Goff Road. Right. It's helpful for our network, not, not so much the connectivity to other communities, but technically it connects to to New yes. to Newington. No, I, yeah, it does, but we need to be realistic. That's yeah. all. I, I would never recommend uh, taking a bike uh, across or try to get through that intersection with uh, the Berlin Turnpike is just a nightmare, never right. mind the hill. You're right, Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four, Prospect Street. Probably the better, uh, better option in terms mm -hmm. of connectivity, if there is if there is a better option, because um, neither one are terribly attractive, but nevertheless, in terms of making that connectivity to Newington. Actually, Peter, most people will take, and now I'm drawing a blank on it, across from Hangdog, it's... Two Rod. What is it? Uh, Hangdog turns into Two Rod Highway. Yes, Two Rod is a much better connection because... Yes. It's wider, it's got the lanes, you cross over at Walgreens and you're on Church Street in Newington. And it's really the one that I think most bicyclists use. Yeah, the others you really have to be in advanced. Right. In, in order to do that. So obviously two rod would be the preferred. So we should uh, make those notations accordingly in the final recommendations. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Maple Street. Um, connects to Rocky Hill uh, on the southern corner uh, of the community, uh, is wide in, or reasonably wide in a, in a lot of spots. Uh, it, the right of way is incredibly wide. You could maybe do a multi-use path within the right of way, um, at least in certain sections of it. So uh, it has some, uh, some assets um, going for it. Mm -hmm. And that connects to Middletown Avenue and Spring Street and Main Street and right. to the rest. Yes, it's definitely a, a critical part of an overall network. Okay. And then last but not least, the Silas Dean Highway. Um, just on a related note, there is a conversation going on about uh, at the EDIC level about um, uh, going back and taking a look at the Silas Dean Highway Master Plan. Um, and so it's in the uh, formative stages. So just uh, to make you aware uh, of that. And, and so the future of the Silas Dean Highway is being discussed uh, uh, at that level uh, as well. So um, the state actually designates the Silas Dean Highway as their uh, designated, one of the designated bike routes in Weathersfield, believe it or not. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm traffic is too fast. Yes, that's, that's why ridiculous. it's ridiculous. Yes, it, uh, believe it or not. Um, so that's why it's on for the conversation. Obviously, in its present uh, configuration, uh, the highway uh, it, it would not make a cyclist feel safe, no. warm and fuzzy. Uh, but nevertheless, um, the conversation would focus on is there a scenario where the Silas Dean Highway could be redesigned uh, to accommodate uh, bicyclists in a, in a safe and effective uh, way? Obviously, um, it's a commercial corridor. There are numerous destinations uh, on the highway uh, that would uh, be appealing for people to uh, visit. However, um, I would classify it as being uh, unless you're riding your bike, even on the sidewalk, um, unsafe um, for your typical cyclist. So I'll, I'll open it up for, I mean, it obviously connects to Rocky Hill and connects to Hartford. So I've got to, I've got to throw that in there as well. Unless they could do the same kind of like separated path that parallels the Silas Dean Highway, like they do in New York City, it doesn't make any sense because of the traffic 
and the congestion to make that a bike route. No. And even on the sidewalk, you've got all those businesses with cars coming in and going out. It's very, very dangerous. And it's gonna be more so with the board and in there. Remember Peter, all the discussion with DOT on that and the, the applicant for the board and so forth and the turns and the limitations on driving in and out of that site. Uh, you know, just an example. And then you're gonna have Chase going in across the street. By the way, Peter, I noticed they're taking down the old tilted kilt, huh? Finally, they are. They finally got around to it a year a year later than they uh, had told us initially. So, did I tell you I called Chase and complained yes, about it? Yes. <laughs> well, that must have that must have done it, George. I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't think it did anything. One phone call from you, and here we are. No, well, I I told him that uh, I have another commissioner of mine, the only woman on that commission. I think at this point, well, we got two or one. You have Sounds one. like there need to be more. Yes, there needs <laughs> yeah, to be more. Yeah, I was just gonna say. But she was in favor of it too. And I said to both of us, you know, one in, one political party and the other, I didn't even get into that. But I said, both <laughs> of us are in favor of it. She she brought up the issue. And, uh, you know, and I, and I have, so. Next thing I know, they have a wrecker out there. They didn't have any excuses, but I didn't talk to anybody in the development part of Chase. But uh, the word got through, maybe. Uh, Peter, what are... Oh, go ahead. Someone's... Um, the other thing on the Celestine Highway is when 91, when there's an accident or um, yeah. construction or whatever, all of that traffic has to come up the Celestine or down the Celestine. Yeah. So that creates a whole nother hazard. So if you look at our, our overall network, if you took the Celestine Highway uh, off the table, you have uh, alternative corridors on either side. You've got Middletown, you've got Wilkett Hill Road. So you have options in very close proximity. Uh, to the Silestine Highway corridor that would functionally, you know, serve um, the same purpose. You can obviously take some of the side streets, Mill Street and Church Street, to get to the Silestine Highway if you wanted to. to but to but to encourage um, the Silestine Highway for uh, bicycling purposes um, is probably not uh, the recommendation that I would uh, yeah. pass on. Plus you start looking at the cost uh, benefit side of it in order to make improvements, to make it safe for cyclists. Um, we're talking um, many dollars. So unless there was a, a large corridor along a public improvement project uh, where many of these things were thought out, maybe if uh, utility poles were removed uh, as was recommended many years ago, um, at you know untold millions of dollars, then it's probably not uh, a recommendation that we would um, pass on further. You know, I actually think we should make us we should take a stand saying that we are against it, so that as the state has their conversations, we are we are already on record as saying we don't think it's a good idea, because you know they're never going to spend the money. I would agree with that thought. And if you're not going to spend the money, then you're not only asking for problems, but you're probably courting accidents that could be potentially fatal given the speed with which people drive on that road mm -hmm. and just the amount of traffic. If anything happens, it's going to be far more dramatic than if something mm -hmm. happened on Middletown Avenue or on one of the other side streets that's an alternative. It, it's sort of like suggesting you put a bikeway on an interstate highway. One, the one thing I want to, in that, in that plan though, because I think that that plan had a Trojan horse bicycle pedestrian route behind the businesses, which I think, you know, <clears throat> we've had conversations about the plan, whether they, they spent so much money and put such a extravagant um, effort on it and nothing happened to it, but the one thing I would say is like that, whether it's our rail with trail or whether it's a, you know, a bicycle facility that runs behind. I, I know their idea was to try to encourage building up, up close to the highway, parking in the back. And, and then, um, and the one thing I also just would say on 
the the other it's I, I agree i wouldn't it's not i don't think it's a it's a place that you want to encourage a bicycle um highway but like some of the other improvements in slowing the speed down and some of the some of the design in that plan could have the side effect of better safer cycling on the other main you know arteries yes i think on the flip side our, our other recommendations that we talked about in terms of traffic calming and you know road diets and beautification of the Silestine Highway uh, should be in the plan to slow down traffic hopefully um, but the we, we shouldn't use a, a bike route on the Silestine Highway as one of those techniques to slow slow traffic down but the report th these recommendations should still include um, the recommendations for traffic calming on the Silestine Highway but I, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page on that. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Okay. We could also talk about air pollution. I don't think a bicyclist wants to be, you know, behind exhaust all the time. Okay. I think we've, uh, we've got that one. Uh, so that brings us sort of to a somewhat related conversation. Um, number three, uh, skipping over one and two, uh, would be the, um, at least the conceptual recommendation that if the opportunity uh, ever presented itself uh, that we revisit the idea of a rail trail uh, on the Genesee and Wyoming corridor, which is once again parallel and behind uh, the Silestine Highway. I think it's um, highly unlikely uh, because they are projecting increased volumes of freight uh, on that corridor, uh, but nevertheless, um, we should have it uh, in the plan uh, with some caveats that, you know, it, if if the opportunity uh, presents itself. So, so clearly that would provide uh, a, an even more definitive alternative to a bike route on the Silestine Highway. I think they're using it about two days a week now. Not every week, but a lot of weeks now we're seeing the train go north and south two days a week rather than one. That all? Really? Well, it used to be just once. You'd yes. see it go north and south just once, usually on Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, this week so far, it's gone. It's had two days. Because I'm, if I'm home, and obviously I'm mostly home, I'm, I put a notation as to time and what direction they're going. So do anyone feel strongly uh, against or in support of number three? Oh, I'm in support 100% because it would be safe and it would connect everyone north and south and going off to the business districts east and west. Okay. I don't think, I think it's gonna happen. I yeah, agree. I, I think that everybody was pretty clear they wanted it if we could have it. Yeah, it's highly unlikely, but at least if it's not in, in a document, um, it would never happen. Right. Okay. I feel strongly about it here, you know I do. Well, okay, well. Uh, so let me go back to number one. So uh, down in the Great Meadows, um, I don't know if we call that the Elm Street extension or what we actually call that down there, but nevertheless, it's part of the Heritage Way. Um, so um, I, I would- High priority. What was that, Judy? I'm sorry. High priority. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's what actually Great Meadow Road. Yeah, I think it's a combination of, yeah, of Great Meadow, Elm Street. Um, so we'll have to, we'll, re we'll research that and get the right- uh, street street names. Um, while we're talking about this, what would uh, the thought be about uh, rather than sticking the route to the existing street network down there, that an effort be pursued to have a separate, uh, dedicated, multi-use, you know, ten-foot-wide paved path, similar to what they've done uh, over in East Hartford and. Glastonbury as part of the uh, Goodwin University trail system. Oh, oh. I would that's... like that, Peter, very much. I think that's it would be kind great. of interesting. I like that idea. Obviously, there's, you know, extensive right-of-way issues. Um, the town only owns certain properties down there, but um, it, would have, it would hopefully avoid the conflicts, you know, with the farmers and their vehicles. Um, would uh, unfortunately have to probably take up some uh, agricultural land, which can uh, be a, a challenge if we were pursuing state 
and or federal funding, but nevertheless, um, I wanted to throw that uh, into the mix to see if uh, this recommendation uh, should take that format or should take the existing uh, route as the preferred way to go. Mm. You know, Are you saying all the way to the ferry, Peter? Uh, it, in theory, yes. I, I, I have not spent any time kind of mapping it out and seeing, you know, what the impacts to properties would be and that kind of thing. But in the effort to, um, you know, minimize conflicts with, um, you know, other users of the meadows. Um, but you know, the road that follows along the river that goes through the meadows is not heavily trafficked. But Peter's talking about straight into Rocky Hill, going instead of going into the gated area, going straight down. Yeah, right. what, I, what I'm thinking is going, you know, right where the connection from the bridge is going to be made, going straight off of that rather than going to the right and using all of that road network, trying to link up with the, the road system farther down um, and yeah. avoid where there tends to be more traffic. Uh, so just, just a thought. It obviously needs a lot more analysis. Um, but nevertheless, wanted to throw that out there for just for the sense of conversation. Interesting concept. I, I would, I, it might make sense. I think it would. And I think the closer you keep it to the river, Peter, from the bikeway over the river, uh, you know, the better off we are. So I think what you're trying to do is do that. And they're asking for it to go right up to Hartford too. And you're seeing more more push uh, uh, intertown wise. Uh, I'll use that term lightly in the Hartford Current and elsewhere. So, uh, you know, I'd I'd like to see we we do something with our our part of the river, really, rather than having it lie there and do nothing except do agricultural work and and keep the uh, you know the area open to the game people. Because I think many people that go down there on their bikes, if they're doing it for the first time, you know, feel as if they're trespassing, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. And we they any, shouldn't feel that way, Peter. Right. And if we had a designated route designed for that purpose, um, I think it would be uh, awful, aw awfully attractive for people to, to come and mm -hmm. take advantage of. Did you discuss this with Rocky Hill when you were talking to him the other day? Uh, we, we haven't had that meeting yet. I'm I'm certainly, depending on how, how this conversation goes tonight, uh, I, I may throw it uh, throw it into the mix. I don't want to cause problems, however, so um, it could generate strong reactions uh, either way. Well, oh, yeah. it's tied into the work on the bridge, correct, and connecting over to Glastonbury. Yes. So I think it makes perfect sense to say, while we're doing all of this work, we might as well create a separate one that eliminates all the extra turns and corners that people have to do and makes it clear that we are uh, encouraging bicyclists and pedestrians. So I I'm okay with it. Okay. I love it. And, and those roads through the, uh, the gated portion of the meadows, which I assume they close at night, um, are so rutted. Um, yes. I know that there is a plan, but um, that that really needs to be brought up to snuff so that people will choose to go there. And it's beautiful. Okay, so this will have to be uh, studied a little further and uh, worded very carefully. And I will, you know, start to do some outreach to see what the reaction is. So this isn't doesn't just show up in our plan without consultation with uh, obviously other affected parties. You know, Peter, it might actually resonate with the farmers a lot more than what we've been talking about previously. So they might be in great support of this. They may uh, not too. Yeah, I, as I say, I'm, I'm not sure what the reaction would be. So I wanted, obviously you guys are advocates for this kind of stuff and they have their own um, interests and concerns, but yeah, it might, you know, tick off multiple boxes on, on both sides of the argument uh, at the same time. Obviously, there's a whole cost um, aspect to this as well. However, those kinds of projects um, can get significant um, you know, priorities and 
some of the funding opportunities that are out there. The, the, the concern I have is we're doing it in a uh, actively uh, farmed agricultural area, and that doesn't um, that 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 would that will be challenging. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, probably not impossible. All right, I'll, let's move on from that one. Um, number two uh, is um, Riverfront Recapture, the, the connectivity uh, from the end of Hartford Avenue uh, up into that area. Uh, I, I highlighted it as the flood protection dike. That may not be the, uh, the preferred uh, route to go and only a small section of this would actually be in Wethersfield. The majority of it would be in Hartford, um, but um, it has many, uh, many strengths. Uh, it, it you know, provides connectivity to Hartford uh, ultimately, it gets us closer to connectivity to the East Coast Greenway um, and is identified already in many existing plans and documents. The route is not defined. However, the concept of it uh, is included in the uh, recently uh, adopted Hartford Bicycle Plan. Um, it's in some of the regional plans. It's in our plan of conservation and development. So uh, it's not a new idea and it's worthy of uh, documenting in our in our plan. That's a yes for me. Okay. Um, I, I'll just say from Riverfront Recapture's point of view, we we view it uh, as as the our support is for the whole way to the Putnam Bridge too, and yeah. and uh, we actually participated in the um, we had a meeting with the mobility um, people. Uh, I know I'm saying it wrong, um, and uh, the mobility study. Um, and uh, we specifically mentioned this route as something that has our strong support and asked that that Putnam Bridge piece keep moving forward. I think given the bigger scope of that project, this is low hanging fruit and something that they should be looking to have a success with early on. So we're excited about that. And we, we'd love to see you keep going all the way to Rocky Hill. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Peter, do we know if Hartford has a similar eye towards the railroad corridor as a possibility? Because that would be another alternative to just continue that north, uh, sort of bypassing the, um, the mm -hmm. airport area and then connecting to the riverfront um, up by the, the big soccer field there. I don't think Hartford gets... Um specific uh, in terms of that recommendation. Uh, obviously that route has um, several competing interests. At, at one point there was a conversation about maintaining the corridor for passenger rail. Uh, now it's being used for freight rail and, and we're asking for it to be considered for recreational purposes. So, um, you know, it's been eyeballed over the years for numerous, numerous things. So, um, you know, therefore, the challenge, and probably therefore, uh, it the recreational aspect being the least likely to to come to fruition. And the and the corridor is owned by the Connecticut DOT, not the railroad as well. So that adds to the even further um, complications. But um, I don't think Hartford specifically has identified um, a rail trail as as the preferred recommendation. Okay. I, I'll just though say there is such energy right now around continuing to extend, uh, you know, the Hartford 400 study and and whatnot. Larson is, I think, very energized with doing something that's going to create more connectivity to the river, and that would always include trails um, and bringing as much as possible. We'd love to see whatever happens with the trashed energy plant have rail go through that. So, so it's, there's a lot of conversation about it right now. It's, it's pretty exciting. Yep. All right, let's um, move on. And this will be the last section we discussed tonight. These are the school routes. Um, so these wouldn't necessarily be um, designated uh, bike routes in most instances, just um, some you know, small accommodations, not only for bicycles, but also pedestrians where um, those accommodations don't uh, exist. But each one of the Safe Routes to School reports recommended some level of improvements, uh, whether it's simply a, a painted 
uh, shoulder line uh, to provide a little extra uh, protection to those kids who are uh, riding their bikes to these schools. So uh, these street sections are right out of the uh, safe route to school reports. Um, so in terms of the Silas Dean Middle School, uh, they, they identified Church Place, which obviously would connect to Church Street if we had a bike route on Church Street. Um, and then some of the surrounding streets uh, leading up to both the middle school and the, um, the, element, the other elementary school, the Catholic school um, would help both schools. So Fairmont, uh, Cotwell, uh, Somerset, Belcher, Hurlbut, and that's the last one uh, specific to the Silas Dean Middle School. All right, uh, Emerson Williams uh, has a similar li uh, list. Mapleside, Dale, Brimfield, Midwell, Western Boulevard on the backside uh, of the school, uh, a, a section of Wells Farms and uh, Crest Street. So once again, these would not be necessarily designated um, bike routes, but they would be uh, additional accommodations uh, to protect those kids who are uh, riding their bikes uh, to school. Yep. Cumberland Avenue, um, which is um, connected to the uh, backside uh, of Charles Wright School. Obviously, there's a boulevard there, uh, so there would be accommodations probably in both um, directions. Um, for the web school, uh, they, they included Cedar. Uh, I don't think we had Cedar in the previous list of the local streets, but it would probably be worthy uh, given the length of it and the width of it, potentially as a, another north-south uh, bike route, at least for that section. Connecting College. to what, Peter? I'm sorry, connecting to what? Uh, okay. Cedar connecting, I'm trying to think of the two inner connecting streets there on the north and south end. Um, Wells Road. Wells and not. Not, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Wells and not. I mean, that's a good stretch. Um, and it's a, you know, pretty intensely developed area as well. So might be worth taking a look at that. So it does provide that short little connection between those two roads. And there's a lot of kids there. There's a park that the kids yeah, all playground. Go. Yeah, the playground. The yes. Okay. And it's I, pretty I, wide streets. You could add a bike lane. Yes, pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the park on street parking situation is, but nevertheless, it could be. It could There's be no like. on street parking. I live on Cedar. No, not not okay. much. Oh, you do. Okay, I never saw much of there. Yeah, there really isn't any. Okay. Uh, we talked about Collier uh, earlier, so this is a, a second time this has been uh, included, uh, and then the other two streets recommended for uh, the High Crest School are Clovercrest and Meadowview, at least portions of both of those streets uh, provide connectivity uh, to the school. Um, is Meadowview, isn't that just kind of a dead end street or am I mistaken? Yeah, I'm trying to visualize myself. Um, no, I think it loops around maybe. It, it doesn't end in a dead end. Um, okay. I could be mistaken. I'll make a note to, to take a look at that. I think that was the last, um, the last of our bike network uh, streets did. Um, now that we're at the end, are there any uh, omissions that uh, anyone wants to throw into the mix that should be um, included? I will. I will be developing a map uh, to share with everybody so you can see this network um, uh, graphically and you can see the connectivity and the, or the lack of connectivity potentially. But uh, so we will be working on that. We wanted to get through this list, get some feedback um, before we mapped it all out. And uh, I've mapped it all out and, uh, you know, just sort of preliminarily just to make sure the network seems to make sense. But um, we'll finalize that and share that with uh, everybody at a future meeting. Okay. Not, not omissions, but I, I think I think that this this list of school routes would be great to like when the plan comes out for action items to have them be like one of our highlighted attacks to, to get something done and you know 
that we're improving school the the school routes and encouraging biking and walking and and have this like as a high priority they seem it seems like a lot of i don't want to say them easy but like they they probably if they were they were done as a package that we really made a, a like a, not that it's marketing but to pull it out as like our one of our big goals to do this is to improve you know school safety and i and i even had the thought like it might be neat at some point to have some kind of like signage or a map that's like encourages kids to bike and walk to school based around these routes you know like to say hey here if you live in this neighborhood i don't know look for the green sign or something you know some kind of like little sub sub markers you know like a trail marker for kids at you know specifically at the school routes uh, rob i'm glad you brought up you used the word package uh what what I intend to do with the, the final recommendations, we talked about this a long time ago, was to uh, either uh, package up both the pedestrian and the bike improvements into, you know, projects, uh, you know, geographically located or on a corridor-wide basis. So you're not doing these individual little projects and they don't connect uh, to anything uh, else. So uh, when we get to the final packaging of all of these. I, I think we're going to present them as you suggested uh, as packaged uh, projects. So, you know, only in, in the case of maybe only one thing being done, it might not make sense to do it without doing, you know, the other improvements at the same time. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's about costs uh, and timing, but that's kind of the approach that we talked about uh, many months ago. And I still intend to do that because you'll you see some commonality between the pedestrian improvements and the bike improvements. There are these main corridors that we're really going to focus on, so it really should be done on corridor uh, by corridor basis. Peter, I would suggest that maybe the uh, school list be expanded to include some of the overlap with the previous list um, because I'm assuming that there'll probably be at least some people to look at this and say, I don't see an improvements uh, scheduled for my school. When in fact, uh, I don't know, like one of them, I didn't see a lot of hammer entries on the school routes, but. So the, the, the Hamner one is was specifically not obvious because most of those are gonna be included um, right. in the complete, you know, connectivity uh, grants. They're all, they're all pretty much gonna be covered by that Four hundred thousand okay. dollar pot of money, um, so that's probably why. And most of them we've we've classified either as spot improvements or um, pedestrian improvements, even though they have the benefit of bike improvements as well. But if we were to do a, a school project, if a complete package of schools, um, that could actually help to get some of the other projects completed in those in the area around Hanmer anyway. Yes, uh, yes. There may be others too, um, you know, especially uh, High Crest and whatever. And if you package them, you can also package the opening of them and, and have it some sort of, for the various neighborhoods, sort of community event kind of things for when mm -hmm. these packages are completed, drawing public interest and hopefully getting more people to bike and walk. I like the idea of the flags or signage for the kids so they'd know which streets are, I don't know, approved or are best for them to uh, head to school in. You know, that Judy, I think that's a really good idea. And I know Rob brought it up first, but even if it was just a color coding system, be really easy to do saying if you see this color you know it's an approved kind of route to use you could use the school uh colors each school has a different color and mascot you could put the mascots on the flags and make it a real um fun way to go to school yeah and i hate to use examples from my work but but ccsu did that with um respect to parking lots and had big banners for different colors for faculty, students, staff, parking lots, and it really increased the, the visibility because no one looks at the little signs, but they see the huge banner and it's flying in the air and it, you can't help but see it. 
And it wouldn't be an expensive way to um, do it in terms of creating those roots. So something to think about. You guys are making the town engineer cringe. You see, you <laughs> I see Derek smiling. <laughs> Never mind the manual and uniform traffic control devices. Forget about it. We'll just throw that out the, out the window here. All right, let's um, move on so I can let uh, you folks enjoy um, uh, the rest of your evening. Um, uh, as I said earlier, we're getting close to the end of the draft plan. Uh, there's still a bunch of community engagement that we, are, um, we will be conducting. Uh, so maybe at the next meeting, we will try and um, attach some timelines to some of these uh, events um, so that we have a, tar a target to kind of wrap uh, uh, this whole process up. We've been at this for uh, quite a while and uh, uh, let's see if we can uh, nail this down and get it wrapped up in a reasonable uh, amount of time uh, this year. So we will give some thought to that schedule and present something to you at the next, at the next meeting. Um, so just to keep you in the loop on um, some of the other projects that uh, are going on with some dates and some times and some schedules. So the uh, community connectivity grant uh, projects that we talked about a little bit ago in Old Wethersfield, uh, we have uh, tentatively scheduled a public information meeting for the evening of March 24th. Uh, it's primarily for Derek and I to get this, these projects back on, on schedule. So we've uh, uh, identified that in the schedule uh, to kind of get, get us back uh, to uh, moving those um, projects along. I think that's a, I think that's a Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday or Thursday night, but nevertheless, March 24th. So if you, there will be um, flyers and further information on that as we get closer to the date. Uh, at this point, it would still likely be a virtual meeting. Um, so we'll have to figure out uh, the logistics of that, but uh, please mark your calendar for that. Um, Derek, uh, if you're still uh, with us, do you want to talk about uh, number two, the Connecticut DOT uh, flashing uh, beacon uh, potential grant? Sure. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, Hi, DOT, hey, uh, DOT had sent out a solicitation. Um, they're looking to seek uh, to get a sense of municipalities' interest in installing uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons uh, at various crosswalks on local roads. Uh, so those, if you're not familiar what they are, they're rectangular uh, flashing lights. They, they stand on a pedestal with a push button. So when you come to the crosswalk, you push the button. It just flashes the lights to alert traffic that you're crossing. So at this point, it sounds like they're just trying to solicit interest. Uh, it might be a project that they put out there. Um, we had talked, Peter and I had talked with um, police department, came up with some locations. They asked for up to five. Um, we came up with a list of some we thought would be beneficial. Um, I would say technically they don't meet the state's requirements for having them installed. However, um, they have a special considerations category if it doesn't meet uh, the traffic volume, traffic speeds, and uh, those types of things, it still could qualify. So with this program, if they do move forward with it, the state would come in, put in the, these uh, beacons, put in associated, uh, if we needed ramps or signs, and then the town would take over ownership and maintenance going forward. Um, so that was just submitted today. And we'll, we'll you know, hopefully get some feedback on that. It'd be, it'd be nice if we don't get all five, if we could get a couple of them at least, um, I think it would be beneficial. Okay. Uh, number three, which was mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, the uh, Connecticut DOT uh, is uh, initiating a very significant regional mobility study um, for the Hartford metro area, which extends all the way down into Cromwell uh, and to a certain extent Middletown and then up north, uh, uh, east and west. So it's a pretty massive undertaking and they're looking at all aspects of uh, transportation alternatives, as was mentioned before. They had their first um, live online discussion last night. I think Kevin uh, was there. Um, I think T Tom Carson was there as well. And I, I sat in just to listen. Um, they've got another one on March 3rd. 
Um, so you can take a peek uh, at the, uh, the website. They're using uh, various forms of public engagement through the website, through social media. You can you know, do the, uh, the old pen and ink and submit it that way or through emails and that kind of thing. But I would encourage anyone who's interested um, to uh, participate. Um, we'll probably talk about it um, a little bit bit later. Uh, I'm going to sit down with Derek and come up with our own kind of official um, recommendations as for things that we would like them to at least be aware of and consider and go on record. But this is a study that's going to take a couple of years, but we are talking about, you know, the I-84, you know, viaduct project, as well as every other conceivable, you know, transportation related recommendation. Um, in the region. So this is a big deal and we're potentially talking about spending, you know, millions and potentially billions of dollars on some of these larger, uh, larger projects um, on a regional scale. So um, I, I don't wanna underestimate the significance of this study effort. So uh, this is an opportunity to um, vision and come up with, you know, things we would like to see happening decades down the road so that at least it's at the table and as part of a regional set of recommendations. Number four, uh, we have a group of Yukon senior uh, engineering students uh, working with uh, Derek uh, and myself. Uh, they are looking at some of the intersections that we've identified in the plan and they are coming up with their own uh, recommendations as well as cost estimates for those um, uh, intersections. Uh, Derek, I think they've got, is it 12 or 14 locations? 14. 14 locations. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of their um, school requirements, they have to present uh, the final uh, project recommendations um, to uh, the community. Uh, so we have uh, identified April 8th as the date for that presentation. Uh, we've suggested that the presentation should be made to our bike and pedestrian committee, which is which are you folks. So we would like to add that to the date of the future meeting, uh, um, specifically for the purposes of um, a hearing and seeing and commenting on the Yukon senior design uh, recommendation. So we would we would ask you to include that on your calendar uh, going into the future. We'll get back to you with more details, but I think that date, that date is pretty solid. Um, a new event on the horizon. I don't think Tom Brown is with us tonight, but um, Tom has been talking to the old Weathersfield Shopkeepers Association and they have agreed to work with him and the rest of the community to uh, create a new event, which would take place uh, during the month of May. Uh, hopefully it would take place during the month of May in future years as well, but uh, their idea is this would be a springtime version of the Scarecrows on Main, where people would submit decorated bicycles and place them at strategic locations up and down uh, the Main Street corridor in an effort to encourage visitors to come and see the uh, bicycles on Main Street, the decorated uh, bicycles on Main Street. So uh, they are, there's a meeting I think next week to start working on some of the details of it, but nevertheless, it would be a springtime version of Scarecrows on Main with a uh, bicycle theme. So um, we'll keep you, we'll keep you posted and, and tuned in for that um, event as it, as it gets closer. Uh, and once again, interrupt me if there's questions. Um, this coming week is the 22nd uh, annual National Bike Summit. Uh, it's an online um, event, if anyone's interested. Um, just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the EDIC is potentially going to create a, a committee or an entity or, or not. They're still talking about, um, about that, but to dust off the Silestine Highway plan. So just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, the Putnam Bridge Trail connection, as we mentioned, that has been pushed off a year. However, we're still in conversation uh, with the DOT 
they are asking that the town, both the town of Glastonbury and the town of Wethersfield take on some of the maintenance responsibilities for the project when it is completed. So we are in discussions uh, with them with some upcoming meetings. Uh, we'll keep you posted uh, on that. I mentioned earlier that uh, we're gonna attend a Rocky Hill uh, Plan of Development Implementation, Implementation Committee meeting. Uh, that's next week, March 3rd, uh, specifically to talk about uh, complete streets. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. We're, we'll report back to you at our next meeting. And then lastly, we are very pleased to announce that just today, we were informed by Connecticut Humanities that they are going to provide us with a small grant to expand uh, the Heritage Walk and also help us pay for uh, a business directory sign on Main Street, uh, Trinity Episcopal Church and the Great Meadows Conservation Trust both want to include uh, new uh, kiosks into the Heritage Walk system. So we're happy to announce that uh, uh, we will now be able to do that. Um, and that will be wrapped up at some point later this year. Any questions on any of those that we can help with? Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. So there's a lot, there's a lot obviously going on. When's the press release going out? Uh, probably next week. Great, very good. Any other questions, comments, things that uh, would benefit uh, those in attendance here? Hey, Peter, uh, this is Brian. I just wanted to um, say that I was, I've been following along every street that you named. I've been looking on my Google Maps. And um, you, as you know, riding, the, riding around town with the boys on the bike trailer, um, I think I, I'm in favor of all of them, honestly, because I'm just visualizing me pulling the boys in the trailer down some of these streets. And I'm like, oh, that'd be perfect if it was a bike trail right there. It's been so many times where I'm just like, hey, I got kids behind me, like, slow down. So. Um, I, I'm in full support of those roads uh, and, and added on to the trail. Great. Any other um, thoughts, comments for the good of everyone? Okay, just a reminder once again, photos um, for the ultimate uh, inclusion in the plan would be very helpful for those of you who have those. Our next meeting is uh, March 18th, same time, and it will still uh, be virtual as far as we uh, have been advised. So with that- Hold it, Peter. Are you saying we're going away from Zoom and virtual one of these no, days? No, I'm saying as far as I know, we are still meeting virtually. If uh, that changes, we will let you know. I mean, are they talking about it even, like the council or others? Some other town halls have already um, gone in that direction uh, with, with um, limited attendance. So, um, you know, I, I, they're loosening up restrictions uh, all the time. So um, we will see how the next uh, few weeks and months unfold, but at this point, um, at this point, there's no conversation here about that. So we are still going to be voting. Thank you. Come on, that's great. Potato salad. We still have the Lady Brother cake. All right. Anything else? Peter, that... can you remind us? Uh, just a quick question. Can you remind us what you need for photos? I don't think I was here when you first mentioned it. So we, we ultimately want to incorporate, um, you know, actual Weathersfield specific uh, photographs of, uh, you know, bicycling activities, folks walking, uh, things uh, like that. So if you have uh, a library of things you think would be um, appropriate to include in the plan, um, just reminding everybody to keep that in mind. So when we get to that point, when you, uh, when we present the draft plan, if you see a photo that you think would fit uh, the particulars of whatever that, um, page of the document is, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, thanks. Okay. Anything else, folks? Okay, I think that um, 
kind of wraps things up and we'll see you um, in about uh, three, four weeks time. And we'll continue these conversations. Thanks, Peter. Okay, guys, thank you. Good night. See you next night, time. Everyone. Good night.